Good afternoon. I'm deaf. Sorry. What? Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Uh, please take your Bibles and turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Got a few things we're going to be looking at today. <clears throat> a little bit of a surprise and a little bit of a show and tell. And uh, we're going to see what the Word of God has to say about this. But firstly, we need to dive into the Word of God. Take a look at Scripture first, what the Lord has to say. So in 1 Timothy chapter 4, <clears throat> and if I may ask, Ian, could you please read 1 Timothy chapter 4, mm -hmm. verses 13 to 16? Till I come, give attendance unto reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, we do thank you for this day, for this time, and Lord, for the truth and power of your word. Lord, for your doctrine, your teaching, Lord, for your theology, your truth, Lord, I ask that you'd bless this study now, and Lord, you'd open our hearts and minds to your word to help us to understand. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we ask and pray, amen. Okay, so as you saw in this passage here that was just read, um, there is one point that is repeated, it's repeated, the doctrine, to doctrine, the doctrine. Now, doctrine is just the teachings of, the teachings of the Word of God. And as we, we've done studies on this before, where the Word of God comes from, the truth of God, it came from Him. As His Spirit inspired the writers. His Spirit inspired the writers that the Word of God comes from God. It is the Word of God, who cannot lie. In Him is all truth, and in Him is no darkness, no shadow of turning. God is not the author of confusion. He preserves His Word unto all generations. He magnifies His Word above His holy name. Though the grass withers, the flowers fade, His Word stands forever, and on and on and on it says. And then, as well, we see in Revelation, His great warnings of damnation and judgment is upon individuals that add to or subtract from the Word of God. Am I right? Okay. Now, you don't have to turn to all of these, but I got a few other references we're also going to be taking a look at just to preface what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, firstly, I'd like to take a look at Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 to 19. Again, you don't have to turn. We're going to be doing a lot of flipping here. But in Proverbs 6, verses 16 to 19, we see a very strong passage. And uh, it's, a it's a famous one. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue. You know, take note in that, put a pin in that one. Proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, and feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies. There it is twice. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren, that, that sows schisms and issues amongst the brethren. So we see lying is mentioned twice, sowing schisms, discord amongst the brethren, and a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. These are a couple things I want you to remember for today. Now with that one, we're now going to go take a look at Galatians 1, 8-9. Galatians 1, 8 to 9. If I may ask, Pastor Paul, can you please read Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 to 9? But though we are an angel from 
heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that he has received, let him be accursed. Okay. And now let's take a look at Romans 16. Romans 16 and verses 17 to 18. And if I may ask, Drew, could you please read Romans chapter 16, verses 17 to 18? Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. What do they do? It says they deceive by good words and fair speeches. They deceive that by lying, they lie to the people. Their, their minds make up, imagine false teachings, false things, and they teach lies, made up lies and slander against God, and they deceive the hearts of the people. Now, we want to go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. <clears throat> 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. Now, this is why this happens, how this happens. You see in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So these, these devils that inspire individuals, seducing spirits, bringing fables, and deceiving people, and spreading lies. Now we want to go over to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. And we want... Verses 9 to 11, Titus 3, 9 to 11, But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Okay? Now we want to go back to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Now, I'm, i got a few more, but the point is, how many times does the Word of God have to say this before we get it and how to deal with heretics? So you see in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, For the time will come they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, their own desires, opinions, and feelings, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. There it is again, by deceiving spirits. Now we want to... Oh, that one's for later. Let's see. Got so many bookmarks here. Okay, we got one more. Second John. Second John. Chapter 1. 2 John, and what verses 10 and 11? 2 John, verses 10 and 11. Second John, verses 10 and 11. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed, not to bless him. For he that biddeth him God speed, is partaker of his evil deeds. But as we see through this, and there are so many more, about how to deal with, to mark and avoid, to call out, to expose, to preach against, to stand against. But in, in and all of this, the point and the purpose is the doctrine, the teachings of God versus the teachings of devils. That God has his truth, his way, his truth, his life, and he tells us how we should stand in it. How we should stand in Him. How we should hold ourselves to the Word of God. 
that God's word is above all things. He magnifies his word above his very name. Okay? Well, we're told that false teachers, false prophets, uh, would be coming in with damnable heresies. And the time will come that people will not be able to endure sound doctrine. Well, yesterday, we were out for a walk. And I don't know if it's in your areas you see this, or those listening in, but here uh, in our area, every once in a while, you see what some people do is they put out this little mini, mini library kind of thing by the sidewalk. And they have it's full of different books and pamphlets and things in it. And on the side, you know, take one, read it, you know, and if you feel obliged, leave one if you want kind of thing. And I like to look in them uh, once in a while and see what there is. And, uh, well, there was one there that got my attention. <clears throat> This book was written by a fellow named W. M. Paul Young. And if you weren't aware, this guy is the author of the damnable, heretical, blasphemous work that came out a while ago called The Shack. He wrote a book, Lies We Believe About God. Lies we believe about God. Now, you may be thinking, oh, I wonder what he could possibly be talking about. What kind of lies? What kind of lies? Okay, so going through what the Word of God teaches, and we see the doctrine of the Word of God, what the Word of God says, what the Word of God teaches. God who cannot lie is not the author of confusion. He's very crystal clear about everything. Of what is righteousness, what is unrighteousness, what is truth, what is error, what's of God, and what's of the devil. But, uh, but lies we believe about God. Things like, you know what, let's just start with one right off the bat. Just with a bang. Let's go down to number 13. Lies we believe about God. You need to get saved. The whole chapter on the lie that you need to get saved. Because you're actually good. Because the, the book goes on to teach about um, that uh, when Jesus was on the cross, he took upon him the sin of all the world, so therefore all the world saved. So you don't need to get saved. You're going to heaven. Lies we believe about God. So I've actually titled this message, Yea, Hath God Truly Said. Yea, Hath God Truly Said. But how about the lie that God loves us but doesn't like us? Well, what in the world does he mean about this? Well, you know, as... as because our sin has separated us from God, that God is upset with sin, all that whole thing. But talking, talking about that, that God is displeased with the people of the world because of their sin, that, that his wrath isn't really upon us. Or the lie, God is good and I am not. The lie that I am not good. Doesn't the Bible say, for there's none good, no, not one? For all are fallen away, all are corrupt, there's none that doeth good, no, not one, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Doesn't the word of God say that? Yea, has God truly said? Actually, I'm going to start rephrasing that. Yea, has God truly said God is a, that God is a Christian? <laughs> what in the world does that mean? Well, if we take a look in the book of Acts, they were called Christians first at Antioch. Now, what, what does Christian mean? It means a follower of Christ, a, a disciple of Jesus Christ. God isn't a, a Christian. God is Christ. God is the Savior, the Redeemer. He is the Messiah. And that Jesus is God. He is the leader of the faith. We are followers of him. How about the lie, God wants to use me? Um, the lie, lies we believe about God, the lie that God wants to use me. What does he mean by this? Well, that, well, that, uh, that, uh, 
my, that my, my life is outside of my control. The point of the, this is that I, am, I have control, I have the power, God works with me, God doesn't need to use me for anything. That I have power, kind of like the Joel Osteen thing, you can declare, decree, and create your own reality. <clears throat> Number seven, the lie. The lie, God is more he than she. Um, the lie that God is more he. Uh, uh, so that implying that God is more she than he. I'm sorry, I don't know what Bible you're reading, bud, but God's called the king, not queen. He's called the prince of peace, not princess. It, he's the father, not mother. He's called he, not she. Um, I don't know what Bible you're reading. Uh, you're you're uh, misgendering God. So we see, now how about this one? The lie. God wants to be a priority. God doesn't want to it doesn't want to be priority in your life. Um, do we not see in the word of God that he is God? We are not. God is not like us and that we serve him. We follow him, that we worship him, that he is the priority of our lives. That, uh, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to all those come and ask you the hope within you meet me some fear that we're, we're to... Put the Lord first in all things, in everything that you do, even in eating and drinking, dwell to the glory of God, and God doesn't want to be priority? Okay. Uh, the lie that God is a prude. Uh, well, that's, that's, that's because this is written by uh, debaucherous-minded individuals who don't have a problem with debaucherous language and talk and think that it should be okay to talk however you want. You don't need to... Uh, watch your words you don't need to be careful with your speech as the word of god teaches about uh, but our speech should be sanctified should be holy to be careful in our conversations there's so much in the word of god regarding this about uh, foul language and loose language and vulgarities that that out of the same mouth proceeds both blessing and cursing out not such things so to be we're supposed to speech speak uh, righteousness let your speech be always salted with grace that this individual is a foul-minded individual or how about the lie? Here's one. The lie. God created my religion. The lie that God created my religion. I, I don't even understand how, how they even come to the understanding of this. It's so, so twisted. It's so twisted that this book is so twisted. God created my religion. Uh, religion. Religion is the physical carryings out of one's belief of faith. That's what it is. Be not just a hearer of the word, but a doer also. The point of religion is to physically enact that, put into action, to, to, put, to put physically that which I say I believe. I believe in the Lord God. I live like it. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I live Christ-like. That God created my religion is a lie? Well, then who created your religion? Uh, how about the lie, God blesses my politics? Well, we try not to get political here, but I will say one thing. You, do you really think that God doesn't care about your political standing? You really think that? Well, how about individuals, certain politicians that, that stand for, like here in Canada, the things they're trying to push of such godless, Christless uh, unholy, debaucherous, satanic bills and uh, the things they're pushing upon our country, you're saying that God isn't involved in this, that he doesn't have feelings one way or another regarding the stances of some politicians and how born-again Christians vote and how they act on politics? You think God doesn't care about that? Well, then you don't know God. Well, how about the lie? Here's one that's really weird. Number 14. The lie. God does not care about what I'm passionate about. God doesn't care about what I'm passionate about. That doesn't make sense. We see in the Word of God that God has uh, His will and the things that He does, but we do see God delights in the joy of His saints, and that God does care 
But at the same time, the things that I do are that are of my passion, of my hobbies and things, we do see that, like for example, with the disciples, they were fishing and they had a great care. Their whole livelihood was in it. We do see that the will of God takes precedent that we should set aside our personal hobbies and things if the Lord so desires. So in a sense there that God doesn't care about that, but he told them to lay aside their nets, come follow him. We do see that the sovereignty of God supersedes my hobbies. That's what we see in the word of God. So this guy's God's not sovereign. How about this one? Oh, you'll like this one, Pastor Paul. The lie. Hell is separation from God. Hell is separation from God is a lie. This guy doesn't understand anything about Christianity. Doesn't understand anything. Well, what is hell? Well, we see hell is that we see hell and the lake of fire are separate. But hell is the holding place of the wicked. That if you die in unbelief, you're not born again saved. You have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord God and Savior. And you die and your eyes close in death, you will open your eyes in flame and torment in hell, awaiting the day of judgment. This is what the word of God says. What God says, God who cannot lie says, this is what happens. You will go to hell where you await the day of judgment. It says uh, hell is brought up. The books are opened and they are judged out of the books for those things they have done, judged for their sins. And the, they'll see that their name is not found written and they'll be cast in the lake of fire. That's what the word of God says. This heretic, this blasphemer, this child of the devil is, uh, is nothing but a liar the preaching imagined lies to deceive people against the Lord. How about this one? The lie. The cross was God's idea is a lie. The cross was God's idea is a lie. What does the word of God say? I know, it's stupid, isn't it? The cross was God's idea is a lie. Well, I don't know about you, but I guess you've never read the Old Testament. Because if we go into the Old Testament, we see the prophecies of when God would come, he'd be born of a virgin, Isaiah 7, 14. He'd be born in Bethlehem, Micah 5, 2. He'd be called the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Wonderful Counselor, the Child Born, Son Given in Isaiah 9, 6. We also see in, in Isaiah 53, it says how, how he would be put to death for our sins and his days would be prolonged, he'd be resurrected. But in Psalm 22, we see it talks about how they pierced my hands and my feet. I wonder what that is. If you actually do the, uh, the research and the study on the Word of God like this, the individual this fool has not done, you will see that that's actually the prophecy of crucifixion. It goes into great detail about what would happen, let alone the fact the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, the death of Christ by crucifixion was God's idea. Um... The lie, um, the lie, you will never find God in a box. Now, what does that mean? Well, this is typical, famous, infamous language by the liberal, progressive-minded heretics, where, but, you know, you've probably heard, it, don't put God in a box. But, you know, it's locked down, that this is the way it is, that there couldn't possibly be other ways, other options, other things, that, 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 that basically sola scriptura is legalistic nonsense. That my feelings and opinions, my personal experiences, my visions, my dreams, the way I want, my, I have my truth, you have your truth. I have my interpretation, you have your interpretation. That's how it should be, according to these heretics. So the idea that God, that God is found in a box, meaning locked down in a set codified system, is a lie. Um, 
I am, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Hold fast to the doctrine which ye have learned, and uh, were to mark and avoid the heretics, those that would presume upon the word of God and bring other things. To even in the Old Testament, there is the test of the prophets that if they came and said something, brought anything that was supposed to be of God, and it was actually a lie, they were to be stoned to death. So we do see that it is a locked down, codified system. We have the canon of scripture. What it says is what it means. Anything outside the word of God is not of God. And anything that contradicts the word of God is a lie. The lie. Not everyone is a child of God. Not everyone is a child of God is a lie. Saying that everyone is... Oh, everyone is. is are they? Every, everyone. Oh, well, yeah, because when Jesus on the cross, he took all the sin of the world, so that means all the world's saved. Oh, you mean like the, the crazed, human-sacrificing, devil-worshipping Aztecs? We're children of God. Or how about the, the Satanists practicing the, the, all, all of their crazy stuff? The, they're children of God. They're children of God. Or how about the, the heretical blasphemer down the road that says that that uh, God is actually uh, Michael the Archangel. Oh, they're a child of God too, right? They're, they're, they just don't understand, but they actually are. You know, so basically, no one goes to hell. Not everyone is a child of God. Who are the children of God? Those that believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. It, as we see in John 3, 18, if you have believed, you're not condemned. But if you have not believed, you're condemned already. Clearly, this person has not even read the Bible. Here's one. Oh, you're going to get worked up about this one, Pastor Paul. Sin separates us from God is a lie. Sin separates us from God is a lie. You know, I've talked about this before, but if you, if you study the Word of God, and you commit to memory the scriptures, and you study the words, the meanings of words, the doctrines, cross-reference, and, and, and all of this, and you really pour over the scriptures, and then you take the scriptures, and you overlay them over the heretical teachings and things just to see how they're wrong, how they contradict. I'm telling you, you that if you're, if you're studying very carefully, you can actually hear the hiss of the serpent. You can hear the hiss of the serpent. Oh, sin doesn't separate you from God. I mean, if that doesn't come from the mouth of a devil, I don't know what does. Sin does not separate you from God. You're still a child of God. You don't need to be saved. You, it, it, you need to get saved is a lie. Right there. You don't need to get saved. You're a child of God. So your sin doesn't separate you. There is no hell. Sin separates from God is a lie. But what does the Word of God say? Sin separates us from God. It flat out says it. Your sins have separated you from God. Um, well, if sin does not separate you from God, I, ha I have one question. If I, had to, if I could only ask one question, I would ask this guy this one question. Well, if sin does not separate you from God, what did Jesus die on the cross for? Just because? Oh, wait, if you're Kenneth Copeland, so you can get a new Mercedes. But uh, Jesus died on the cross. He went to the cross because, well, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. That there has to be the death of the lamb, the shedding of the blood, the atonement for sin. That your sins have separated you from God and your sins need to be dealt with. Otherwise, your sins will damn you to hell. That's what scripture flat out teaches. This person is literally calling God a liar. Everything in this book, this book, this book is saying that this book is a book of lies. Literally. Here's one. Now, 
If, you've, if you folks have tuned in to this morning's message, uh, Pastor Paul going through John 17, verses 15 to 26, there was one very Im interesting point that was made, and I, I took note of it, because I knew that this last one in the list of heresies here would really get our attention as Pastor Paul went, on, went over this in some detail. This last one, number 28, the lie, God is one alone. It's a lie. Didn't you know that, Pastor Paul? That's apparently a lie. That God is one. Uh, we literally just read it in John 17. Jesus even says it from his own mouth. He is one. God is one. There's one Lord, one God, one Father. It's, it's one creator. It's one person. God is one. That's what the Bible says again and again and again and again and again. God is one. And this guy says that God is one alone is a lie. So what do you do with things like this? What do you do with these? What do you do with it? God is true and there is none else. Amen. 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 Our Father, we thank you for this day, for this time, Lord, for the power and truth of your word. The Lord, you are not the author of confusion. You are not a liar. The Lord, that you are true and righteous. You're altogether lovely. Lord, that you are holy, that you are the only one. Though all that is against you is lies. It is that clear. It is that concise. It is that real. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your word that you preserved it that it cannot be corrupted, that it stands forever in the test, through the test of time. Lord, we thank you and praise you that we can come to you and understand all truth, that you are the way, the truth, the life. Lord, we thank you that we could come to you for all answers of all things. Lord, we thank you for protecting us by your word, for holding us by your word. And Lord, we ask that you please just help us to remember these things, to guard our hearts and minds by the power and truth of your word that by the power of your spirit, you would teach us, you would hold us, you would instruct us, you would convict us, and so much the more. Lord, that you hold us in your word to your truth in the days to come. In the name of our only Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray, Father. Amen. And as we see, the reason why this heretical fool doesn't understand the Word of God? One simple answer. He ain't saved. You guys see in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, The natural man receiveth not the things that be of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, for, he, for they are spiritually discerned. You've got to have the Spirit of God to understand the Word of God, and the very fact that he could write a book saying that all of this is lies proves he has not the Spirit of God, and that he is still condemned. That's what the Word of God says, and the people don't like that, and the people online especially aren't going to like that, and the fact that what I did with the book, they're going to be calling me out on that, I don't care. We see in Acts chapter 19, verses 19 to 20, and they gathered together the books of curious arts, and they burned them, and so mightily grew the Word of God and prevailed. That, uh, that's what the Word of God says to do. We, we are to stand up against heresies, to fight against heresies, and if it goes against the Word of God, it's to be declared as heresy and fought against, stood against, or to mark and avoid. We don't compromise. We don't water down. We don't uh, uh, mince words. We don't dance around the bush. What it says is what it means, and if you don't like it, you got a problem with God. There we go. I better stop before I get too worked up. Hope you're going to clean that up. Eh? <laughs> <laughs>